Michael, good to see you. After game one, you talked a lot about Portland's runs and, and how big an impact that played in the result there. Um, the other night, it seemed like you guys did a really good job limiting their momentum and limiting those same runs. What do you think was the key to that? And do you think any of that is translatable to this afternoon? Uh, I think the key is just the defense. You know, um, you know uh, in game one, um, they had uh, end of the first, end of the third, end of the fourth quarter, big runs to close each of those. And I believe if you added all those up, it was a 39 to 10 run in their favor, which makes it really hard to win a game. Uh, you move forward to game three, uh, they came out obviously uh, with a tremendous sense of urgency and uh, kind of hit us in the mouth right away. We responded by getting stops. We closed on 19 to four run and we made a bunch of threes. Nicola came down, had back to back. Aaron hit one, kind of settled us down and allowed us to kind of regroup and get back into the game. Um, we always say it is a game of runs, but how you stop a run is by getting stops, by getting gang rebounds and then executing on offense, getting a high percentage look and making shots. So uh, we know that you know, they're going to play with a tremendous sense of urgency today. Did not want to go back to Denver down 3-1. Um, and that's what we talked about after the game. That's what we talked about this morning. Uh, we have to get off to a better start than we did in game number uh, three. And we have to be ready for how aggressive they're going to be. And uh, hopefully our guys understand that. And I, I guess we'll find out in about a, an hour and a half, two hours. Chris Marlowe, Altitude Sports. Hey, Coach, I, I was wondering, what's the biggest challenge uh, for your team playing a day game? Uh, I don't see any real challenges. I mean, uh, I guess the, the only challenge you could talk about, Chris, would maybe be a uh, short turnaround from game three to game four. You know, we played Thursday night. Um, so now you're playing less than 48 hours later. Um, it throws off maybe your usual game day routines, but uh, it's the same for both teams. So I don't know if there's any advantage or disadvantage. Um, it's a matter of whether the game starts at 8.30, like game one, or 1.30, whatever it is today. You have to be ready to go out there and do your job, regardless of what time you're playing. So uh, hopefully our guys can, uh, can understand that and go out there and execute at a high level. Ryan Blackburn, Denver Stiffs. Coach, you mentioned the sense of urgency that Portland is going to be playing with. Do you think that manifests itself more in the sense of physicality that they're going to give you, the execution, or, or maybe certain changes that they'll make to their general game plan? No, I, I don't think you'll feel their sense of urgency in terms of any adjustments they make from a coverage standpoint. I think you will feel their sense of urgency from their physicality, which you pointed out. Uh, but also just in terms of how aggressive they are. You know, obviously, Damian Lillard is playing at a high level. C.J. McCollum, we know what their backcourt is capable of. Uh, so we expect them to come out like they did in the regular season finale here, game number 72. Uh, they came out firing on all cylinders, attacking, making threes, and just trying to really uh, have us on our heels. Uh, so I, I think you'll kind of uh, – see that urgency in their physicality and their aggression on both ends of the floor. Leonardo Torres. Hey coach, it's Leonardo Torres from Peru. Hope you're well. Coach, Nicola continues to play at an MVP level and the team is scoring the open shots. What do you think the team needs to be more consistent or improve to win this game? Yeah, I think, you know, um, for me, it's always going to start with our defense. You know, obviously you mentioned Nicola. His stats in this series are uh, why he's the MVP in the NBA this season. He's been remarkable um, every single game. He's getting a lot of help from his teammates. Um, but defensively, you know, we talked about going into this series, can we guard the three-point line? And game one, they made 19 threes. Game two, they made 16. Game three, they made 14. Um, hopefully that can continue to go in the right direction. And you have to remember four of those 14 threes in game three came in the final 43 seconds. So we did a tremendous job of guarding the three for most of the night. Uh, it's a huge part of who they are offensively. So if we can find a way to defend the three 
and improve upon our gang rebounding. They hurt us with 14 offensive rebounds for 17 points in game number three. If we can defend the three and rebound, and then get out and run and play with pace and play in attack mode ourselves, then hopefully we'll have a chance to get another win here in Portland. Maria Tab Deportes. Hi, Coach. Hope you're well. I would like to ask you precisely about Nikola Jokic, but looking at the big picture, how would you describe his role in this team, his growth, his development? And is there something that you would like to continue seeing from him, especially in a series like this one against the Blazers? Yes, I'd like him to continue to average 36 points, 12 rebounds, five assists, and do it all while while being uh, ultra efficient. Uh, If he's able to continue to average those numbers, I think that bodes well for our team. Uh, Maria, you asked about his development. Obviously, uh, we've been together for six years, Nicola and I, um, and to see him grow up on the court, off the court, mature into a leader um, has really been um, so impressive. And I'm just really fortunate uh, to be a part of that and to be uh, around him every day, to see that maturation and development as a player and a young man. So, um, you know, he's a great player, and we need him to continue playing uh, at, at that MVP level he's been playing at. All right, that'll do it. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.